Welcome back to the 67th USHA Four Wall National Handball Championships. My name is Dave Vincent here at Los Caballeros Sports Village for the World Players of Handball, giving you the continuous stream of these national games in Fountain Valley alongside Katrina Casey. Welcome in for the men's finals. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Now, you're from the same county as Killian Carroll. Absolutely. County Cork. You, you both grew up about, you know, the same time, same area. You've been on traveling trips together. You probably know his game as much as anybody, but then you are a student of the game. You follow what Paul Brady's been doing. How could you not? Exactly, and yes. You, uh, you have to admire his direction and all the stuff that he's achieved, uh, the successes that he's had. Is it hard for you to, to root, or are you just a fan wanting to see good handball here? Um, it is a little bit hard for me, to be honest. Um, Killian would be one of my best friends in handball, and like you said, we did grow up together. Uh, we're the same age. We've been on a lot of trips together, starting with the Junior Nationals at Christmas time. Um, but of course, I would have become familiar with Paul at the beginning as um, kind of the nemesis of Tony Healy, who is my own sporting idol growing up, but obviously you cannot help but look up to somebody like Paul Brady. Just his dominance in the sport is unrivaled, really, in any sport around the world. And, um, you know, he's a nice guy as well, and I'm just looking forward to a great game. I'm excited to watch. It's going to be the best two out of three to 21, tiebreaker to 11. Our referee is Shorty Ruiz, and there's that announcement for Killian Carroll. Paul Brady going to serve first, wearing that Ninja zero, zero. Turtle headband. Yeah, that's a new look for Paul, I think. <laughs> what is Killing going to have to do here against what we think is probably the best Brady we've seen One in zero. years? Yeah, Paul is looking great. Like, um, he has been you know, untouchable really so far in the tournament and just, I have never seen him serve so well, to be honest. Um, he, he's even said himself that he hasn't felt so good in years. Uh, but I think, one. you know, Killian himself is admittedly a slow starter and I just don't think he can afford to do that against Paul Outside. today. And he just needs to weather uh, the Paul storm at the beginning and stay in there with him. Um, and I've no doubt that he will do well. It seems that if Killian's able to wear down some of those aging legs, there's a possibility mixed in with some of the good play that he's possessed on the pro tour throughout the season. He's going to have to minimize those type of mistakes. Defending champion in WPH one race for eight, number one, Killian Carroll, and 10-time USHA National Four Wall Pro Champion Paul Brady collide right now for their second consecutive year in the finals of these national games. They are the two best players in the sport. Absolutely. So it's nice to see that happen. You know, that the draws aren't in such a way that Zero one's one. on the, the other sides of the bracket. So this, it's good to see these guys actually clash in the biggest tournament Yeah, they in the deserve US. this stage. Um, but I think Killian has become known kind of as a retriever of the ball and just obviously he has great athleticism and he never gives up on any shot. But he's also a shot maker himself and he's more than capable of killing the ball from anywhere on the court. Um, just waits for his opportunity, I guess. Well, we already, you know, Killian was already the number one player and the national champion. And yet throughout the season, it felt sort of like he was the most one improved one. player because you're seeing things in his game that he wasn't doing just a year ago. I mean, he's making adjustments. Lord. And that's the part about Killian that's really impressive. Other than the fact that he has a very strong head. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't get rattled, doesn't let the referee get into his head. He doesn't argue. Exactly, yeah. It's he's almost like he takes cool, it out on you. And collected. Out. Yeah, he just channels it into his performance, I guess. I traveled one, one. down to the club with him this morning and he's very relaxed, which is good to see. Great Point. shot. Killian powering that ball down the right wall with authority. Sometimes you get in there with somebody who hits the ball harder. Let's look at this replay. It's just a perfect shot. You hit it. You're in there with Paul Brady, and you feel like you have to match his power, and that takes you out of your game immediately because that's not what you do. But Killian is able to strike the ball 
anyway very hard. Yes. One of the best pound per for pound, you know, strikers in the game. And one of the best uh, fly kill artists in the game, I would say. And that's part of his improvement right there, the sort of on-the-run uh, creativity where you see Paul uh, Sean Lenning do this, you see Luis Moreno do this. 3-1. Uh, Mondo Ortiz plays like that, Sorry. and that's the part of the game that killing has improved over the last couple of years. Being on the run, stop really quick, still make the precise mm -hmm. shot. Second serve. And I've no doubt he's learning from all of those players. He's really... Um, Played in every tournament on the tour Thank you. this past year and uh, learned from all of those guys. One three. Scores one to three. You're listening to yours truly, Dave Vincent, alongside Katrina Casey, and that ball looked like a slid there at the end. <laughs> Killian giving it to him Thank without even mean. any question. Yeah, well, Killian saw the slide, and he did that yesterday as well. I think the referee One, missed three. it, the lines judges missed it, and Killian just gave it to Emmett like you won't meet a more honest player. Point. I remember that, and I, I've seen Killian do that in past tournaments, and I always kind of question him afterwards, but he says it didn't really matter. Mm -hmm. So two, three. you're talking about a gentleman here. Two to three, and you can't stop talking about it because there's so many instances where he's done things like that. I'll try to sprinkle some as he skips that ball in, just, just, just a about. hair off. See, that's the thing with Paul. He's going to make you hit the perfect shot, and obviously you have a small margin or error there. But he's right to go for them. I think that may have been short. See an appeal. Does it seem to you that Paul looks a little... A little off. I mean, from the way he's looked in this tournament, not he's not the same that we saw yesterday. Well, it seems like he's a yeah, little bit maybe feeling out moment right here. Um, I guess yeah, he's just settling into the game. Probably just more of a reflection on his opponent. Yeah, maybe so. Four to three. Scores four to three. You're talking about a guy being off, and he's still leading four to three. And Killian's made most of the unforced errors. Let out. Paul Brady doing a new thing here this weekend, and I've seen it at some of these tournaments where he's showing up late. Three, four. You know, remember the old days, it was Paul Brady stepping onto the court first. We saw Killian step in at about 10 after 12 yes. here in the uh, on the Pacific time zone, Southern California. That used to be Paul Brady. But instead, Paul's showing up one or two minutes before kickoff, but he's doing his workouts at another court. Yeah, I was just going to say, I'm sure he was on the back court somewhere, finding his own space. Sometimes it's easier, actually, just, you know, to be on your own. That looked like it slid a little bit. I was joking when I said that Paul was channeling his inner Luis Moreno by showing up right at the, <laughs> at the start time. But see, Paul, I think has found what is the formula that makes it work for him, and that is just to go get Sorry. physically or mentally ready off the court and then go in and just warm up. I also believe that your endorphins kick in before a match like this, and he's feeling very loose. Mm -hmm. Second serve. Oh, he knows what he's doing. Like, his preparation is going to be down to a tee. He's not showing up late due to um, a lack of organization or anything. Not that Luis Moreno does either, in case Luis is listening. Luis had a system there for a while that was just show up four minutes late, referee and everyone's in a panic, and then he goes in there and just <laughs> destroys turn. whoever he's playing. And you wonder, what are you doing off the court and where are you? Yeah. I mean, it's not, he's a celebrity. It's not easy to hide around here. Oh, beautiful That's, shot. What, what do you call that little left-handed cut corner kill? I don't know, but I have Let's seen make up that. something. Killian modify his swing a little bit sometimes Force. this year. It seems to be working well for him. Second serve. And there's a miss from Paul Brady with his left hand. Killian Carroll is aiming to repeat, announce himself as the game's next dominant champion. Four, four. While Brady is seeking his record tying 11th USHA four wall national title to tie Nadia Alvarado Sr. and Anna Engel, who also has 11. Let's not forget about the greatest women's player that's played our game in 
our generation and somebody that you looked up to and then now looks up to you, Katrina. I don't know about that. No, she, it's, she's put it on the record. Absolutely. I'm glad that you mentioned her because just to sustain that level, you know, be at the top for that many years is really admirable. Like, I don't think anyone would begrudge it to Paul, just in terms of his legacy, like, to say that he has equaled um, Addy's record. Maybe Killian would begrudge it to him at yeah, this point. <laughs> maybe. But, you know, just given that he has won five um, consecutive World Handball Championships, like, that has to, I think, assert him as the greatest player there's ever been. Well, you know, the, the pair, these two together, they're separated by 15 years. And I don't know if at any time there's ever been a 15-year gap between mm -hmm. the players in the finals. I don't think it's ever happened. Looking back on the all-time list, we were trying to make comparisons, but it just was it, it was much closer than we thought. It was always within, you know, Five six years, or seven yeah. years, you know, at the very most. This is 15-year difference here. Yeah. Well, that's impressive in its own right. Yeah, well, Paul is in great shape. Like, he could easily be a man in his 20s. Let me tell you how great Paul Brady's been. Nobody's defeated Paul Brady in two consecutive Paul Brady matches, as Killian Carroll had since 2004. And before that, the records aren't really clear enough for us to say somebody ever did do that mm -hmm. in consecutive matches. Yeah. I would say consecutive finals matches, but mm -hmm. you know what I'm talking about. Paul Brady just doesn't lose, but in back-to-back -back tournaments, Killing Carroll took him down, and the Players' Championship in Portland then got him at the Nationals. So the semifinal in Portland, and then the final right. Nationals, yeah. And then Paul came out strong in New York in March. Um, he obviously didn't want to make it three in a row for Killian. Didn't want that to be a stat. That's a nice return of serve there from Paul. And, you know, we're talking about the creativity of Killian Carroll, but look at Paul Brady toward the end of his career here has come up with a lot of different creative shots mm -hmm. that he didn't have when he was younger. I mean, if he had them, he just didn't show them all the time. But now it seems that he has that cool underhand left paddle shot kill, return serve. Things that he wasn't doing previously, he's he does now, and they're really good. Mm -hmm. Just great sign of a player to be able to adjust their game. It's very hard to break habits, like. Both players playing defense, looking for someone to overhit a ball like that from Brady. Killing doesn't put it away. This might be the big setup of the rally. The ball hits Paul on yeah, the way up. Yeah, bit of an anticlimax. Well, you know, it's interesting. You're talking about, you know, changing their games. I always felt Tony Healy had that that really cool style of being able to, like, change a serve and go with a high serve like that from killing. Absolutely. But t Paul does it, too. He just does it differently. Mm -hmm. It's not going up to the roof where he changes his game. It's just he'll either slow the tempo down or, or jack it up a level. But he certainly Very has more. changed his game. And Killian's doing it right now. Another student of... Tony Healy. Yeah, and I think he should stick with that serve. It makes sense. At the moment, I'm sure Paul will adjust. And there's a timeout being called here. But it that works. that change of serve right there, just in the last couple serves for Killian, does remind us just a tad of that Mondo Ortiz playing Paul Brady in Salt Lake City when Mondo changed to that exact same serve and ended up winning that match. Mm -hmm. And that wouldn't really be Mondo's game. Mondo's no. game is purely based on power normally. Well, I spoke to Mondo Ortiz a couple days ago about defeating Paul Brady in Salt Lake City a couple years ago. And he said, you know, up to that moment, I've never served that serve in my yeah. entire life. I never. It just seemed like I needed to do it. So it I went up there. a good time. Yeah, what a perfect timing for our Mondo. Killian Carroll has won four Race for Eight titles, Players' Championship in 2016, 17, New Orleans this year. Houston, Carroll is the only player in race rate history to win back-to-back -back players' championships, in fact. And Paul Brady, 59-3 in race rate history. 
which is similar to your record. You've won 12 of 13 <laughs> women's events, Eight Katrina. That only loss was to Ashley and Riley at the U.S. Open. Yeah, on this court, back. actually. Yep. Thanks for reminding me before I go in and play there. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't the court, it was the opponent that you played. Yeah. As we're back into play here, Paul Brady Point. misses that shot into the right corner. Nine four. Killing up nine to four. Get a slide. That's where the ball has been sliding, but you're not going to ever hear anything from Killian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a good start for Killian on the scoreboard, at least. Like you said, Four he has nine. made some errors, but that's natural. Like, this is a highly pressured event. See what happens here. Paul should load up. Doesn't affect Killian. Nearly got to it. See, that's the thing. Killian will make everyone play at least an extra shot in every rally, and that's going to take its toll. Well, I think Killian's doing exactly what he wanted to do, and or exactly what he was hoping he was going to get from Paul Brady, and that is try to get a lead, but try to keep these rallies going, because mm -hmm. that's going to wear Paul down. As you know, Paul did take a timeout. So whatever it is that Killian is doing is working. Point. And I, I don't think Killian was overly confident coming into today's final. I think he felt like his training and preparation last year was better. Um, but sometimes Sorry. that's a good thing. You're kind of taking the pressure off yourself a little bit. Although he is the number Second one seed. So. Well, didn't Killian get a first round bye? He did. So that means Paul's played one extra match. Yes. And that might help out a little bit. Let out. I mean, then again, some of those early round matches from Paul were Nine, six. kind yeah. of batting practice. Kind of routine. Lord. No offense. And to well, no, it's, it, it really isn't because it actually helps that player out because they get Thank accustomed to the court. Yeah. Killian has to adjust a little bit. says Paul can't play defense. You see, he has the very first opening, and he goes for it and gets it. Killian shaking his head a little bit there. I think upset with himself. Yeah. Well, he was there, wasn't he? He nearly made it. And, like, it's brave of Paul to shoot the ball when Killian's that far in front of him. It's kind of vulnerable for the recall. I think he's upset because he just wasn't a step further toward the front wall. Maybe. Like, I... I knew it was going to happen, and I, stu I yeah. stayed back. Out. I thought we were going to see a peel from one of these players. I thought that ball was short on the serve, but I knew that Killian wasn't going to call it. It must not have been, because Paul didn't say anything. Mm. Nine, six. Score is 9-6, to six, game number one going to 21. This is the men's finals of the USHA Four Wall National Handball Championships in Fountain Valley alongside Katrina Casey, women's number one Thank player, you, arguably the greatest to ever play the game. Even though it's the only reason why you have to say arguably, because we all know you are, is the fact that you just haven't had the tournaments yet. And you're only, what, 22? 23. 23, so. Thank you. But that's the only reason why. Gosh I darn could it. argue it myself, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the goal. Well, that's what you do, you argue. <laughs> yeah. nice shot. Although you don't. You, like Carol, don't argue much. And I always, we were talking about making adjustments in the game. I think that we really have to compliment you because you're one of the very best at making in match adjustments. You know, you're playing in New York, you get taken to a tiebreaker, you come out, you set by yourself, nobody talks to you, you don't have a coach. But something or somebody in your past coached you, and in your brain you says, I, I need to do this. And you go in there with a whole different like mindset, strategy, and somehow you worked it all out in your head. In a moment when some people would be so frustrated they'd want to go cry, you go in there and you changed your game. And I've seen you do this multiple times against Ashley, and I've seen you do it in 
in New York, saw you do it in Salt Lake City, where you go out and spend moments by yourself. Where, where does that come from? Is that? Uh, I think experience just teaches you, like, even if you lose the first game, the match is still there for the taking. Like, if I win the first game, I don't assume that the match is over, so you shouldn't behave any differently just because you lose it. It's the best of three for a reason. That's why the tiebreaker is there. You can save the crying for afterwards. Which you have done. That's another thing that... What? No. Well, no, it kind of <laughs> reminds me of Anna Engel. You know, she'd win. She'd cry when she wins. She'd cry when she yeah, loses. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't see you crying when you win, but no. and I don't see you crying when you lose, but you definitely are not Behind happy. Behind closed doors. Yeah. <laughs> nice shot there for Paul Brady. Now this game, what people don't realize at this level, and especially on this type of stage, is that it is so emotional. As we look at this instant replay here, and I've seen players after a win, they just don't, they have so much emotion that you've built up, and it's like the whole world's on your shoulders, and then you finally get that win, and you you can't control yourself. And crying isn't necessarily what people think crying is. It's just like you have to release some type of energy and it comes out that way. Yeah, I guess you really see different personalities in handball, how people react to wins and losses. But um, yeah, I think a lot of people are just more driven on by how much it hurts to lose rather than how great it feels to win. Remember when Sean Lenny first defeated Nadi Alvarado, and it was, you know, Nadi was the guy that you wanted to, to beat, and when he, he came over, and it was like, you're talking to Sean, and he's like choked up, like he's, he just saw, you know, Forrest Gump talking to Jenny, <laughs> you know, and it was like, you know, just crying, and it was like, you know, this kind of sort of crying, sort of, not crying, but, you know, emotional, and you're like, wow, this is Brady, so important, this win was that. so important to him. You know, but that's, that's the great thing about sports, and it's not just handball. It happens. Seven eleven. It happens everywhere. Seven serves eleven. Short. Paul still within striking distance. Killian's had the lead throughout the second serve. First game here. was sort of the same sort of sequence earlier when Killian didn't overplay that shot from Paul. This time he did. Paul missed his shot. Paul is so good at getting his right hand on all of those back walls. Sets up so well. His leg work is amazing. You know, Paul really hasn't located that Second serve yet serve. today, the one that we were talking about. Yes. Yeah, he aced uh, his opponents a lot this tournament. <laughs> Unbelievable. I'd say best server in the game after this weekend, but yet he hasn't really tapped into that here. Oh, that's crazy, and the crowd likes it. That wakes up Southern California. Paul says sorry. Yeah, I think that was a little bit lucky. I don't think Paul would traditionally go for that. Yeah, it was off the top of his hand. Mm -hmm. I, I was going to say, I don't know if he would traditionally yeah. apologize either. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you're going to have a few of them in every game. Well, it, it, first of all, Paul wouldn't have apologized if the crowd wouldn't have clapped. Because mm -hmm. then Paul's saying, well, they're clapping for a great shot, but that wasn't a great yeah. shot, so I'm going to have to apologize. Yeah. I'm telling you, this crowd can never win here. <laughs> Always doing the wrong things. Second serve. Killian Carroll and Paul Brady have faced each other four times. Paul Brady's won three in race for a play and including these national championships. No, clearly I'm not talking about well, that world championship okay. first What round. was your stat there? <laughs> Let me just double check that. You have it all memorized, You're saying right? three out of four to Paul. Three out of four to Paul in race for a play and Nationals. national champion. Yeah, I wasn't talking about the world since Well, what about Killian's win in uh, Salt Lake and then at Nationals in Minnesota? So that's two to Killian. Yeah, we, see, I told you there are some things that we're not counting here. See, I need to stay clued in. 
can't let you get away with that. No, in race for eight history, actually. It's just, okay, just not using race for eight. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. And not counting the world championships in that first round of 2012 when Paul took down Killian, but we knew back then that he was awesome. But yeah. I remember it. Well, City West. Yeah, in 2012, Killian was 19, so kind of just up and coming. 9 11. Nine serves 11 here. Little screen, no call. You have to hand it to the referee, Shorty Ruiz. He's letting these players play through some of those screens that I know refs would have called. Mm -hmm. It's always good to have a pro player up there themselves because they know what the players want. I mean, he's really letting them play through some of these. I have seen questionable screens, but the players don't want them to be called. Yeah. Often the worst is when the referee jumps in too quickly. You're better off seeing how the play unfolds. Second serve. Point. Can't make those mistakes. Point for Paul Brady. When you give Paul Brady points, and he's already going to develop some on his own anyway. 11-11. We're all together at 11 now. Killian had that 9-4 lead. He's only scored two points since, and Paul scored seven. That ball fooled Paul up front. 11-11. Nice. That's a great shot there from Killian. Paul's either going to look at the ball, he thinks it's broken. That right there is not legal, I don't believe. You can't throw the ball to try to break it. I thought possibly the ball was wet. If that ball is considered broken, I don't think it would be legal no, for Paul. It's not broken, Brady, at the point. It's not broken. But it probably will break. break over the next couple of rallies, but Point. it's kind of bad luck. But you also can't throw the ball, ball a couple ahead. times to break it further to prove that yeah, it's Yeah, well, I've seen that done. I have too. Point. I think there should be some leeway there, like, but you'd have to kind of define how many throws are allowed. And I agree because after we see that amazing shot there from Killian, but I agree because I believe the pro players they know things. Oh, yeah, that they have like a sixth sense. Oh, I mean, it's unbelievable. They'll yeah. just say this ball's broken. You go, well, no, it's not. And you look at it and go, oh, yeah, there's a little crack there. How yeah. do you know? You know, but they do know. 14, 11. They've spent enough time in the alley. They know how it should be bouncing. Nice dig. It's a setup for Paul, though. There's that beautiful, smooth right hand kill shot down the middle fades away with uh, somewhat of a reverse down to that right wall. Yeah, just perfect. Paul, Paul Brady has an amazing reverse with his left hand. 11-14. He'll get to this. Oh. oh. Paul has Killian just spinning around in circles and in that And he was court. back in position again, I think. If Paul not for was that a little bit fortunate that that cracked out. Yeah, if we look at the replay, if it not yeah. for the crack, Killian was all set up to punch that ball someplace. And I believe that we're going to get a timeout call here. See, Paul is wearing a new style of uh, runners for this tournament. New headband. They're kind of the indoor soccer style. I don't know what the logic is, but I'm sure there is one. And I think all the kids in Ireland will be wearing them if he wins this. Uh, <laughs> That's final. true. Last year's 11 to 10 tiebreaker final with Paul Brady gunning for number 11 and Killian Carroll winning his first was the match of the century. In my opinion. It was exciting. It was absolutely exciting to watch that. And I know there's a lot of build up to these guys and, you know, Paul Brady being down here in Southern California, a place that Nadi Alvarado Sr. made his home. 
who has number 11, and it means so much for Paul to get to that plateau because I mean, it, if he never played after this, if, if he wins, then he is tied with the greatest of all time, a guy that he had looked up to. I mean, yeah. a, a number that he's looked up to for many years. Yeah. That would mean a lot. Of course, 12 would mean a lot, but this is a big one for Paul, and if Absolutely. he were able to pull it off, you, you, you're going to definitely see a lot of emotion here. Yeah, like Paul is a real goal setter, and obviously he has achieved so much. Like I know um, his goal was to win 10 senior singles championships back home in Ireland, and he did that, and then he kind of started focusing more on playing in the tournaments over here. And there was a lot of talk about this last year, that last year he was going to equal it, this year he was going to beat it. Right. So Killian threw a spanner in the works. Uh, it felt like Killian pulled off the impossible when he did it because he was trailing and came back and got a few points at the end, and it was just uh, a remarkable, you know, mindset for the, this young guy, Killian. But then yeah. he proved that he's able to do it. You know, he defeated Paul Brady before that tournament. Everyone said Paul is not going to lose twice, and that's why it even felt right. more special right. for Killian. Yeah. Yeah, Killian is completely unfazed by what happens. Like, Killian has lost, I believe it was to Emmett on the race, 15-0 in the first game, and came back and won the match. Right. I just remember seeing that result and laughing. It was 0-15, 15-13, One of the rare times that you win the match but lose the point total. Well, you know, dramatically only. lose the point total. Yeah. yeah. I think it was like 41 to 14, 12. 30 was the deficit, but he ended up winning. 14 to 12, game number one, going to 21. Killing would love to get this first game. I mean, that would be a huge plus. Killian raising his hands there. Bad bounce. You guys see a bad bounce off the back wall? Bad, bad bounce. Sorry, I didn't see it. So frustrating. Yeah, you Kill very rarely see that overturned as well by nine judges. But kill very rarely see Killian oh, ever appeals, and I just don't see why he did. would if it didn't yeah. bounce odd. Can the line judge take that in consideration? <laughs> well, I guess they probably shouldn't be biased by who is making the appeal, but. I mean, I know if I said it, the line judges, 30, <laughs> I know the answer, but if. <laughs> Killian says it. It must have been a bad bounce. That's a great serve yeah. down the right right there. 14, 14. Now we're all together. Sorry. Now Paul's starting to get closer to locating that serve that's brought him to this point in the tournament. Second serve. For a slide. Let's see if the champion I gets it. I couldn't slide tell out. from the video, to be honest. Well, we have two video 14, monitors 14. here. It's kind of confusing which one to watch. Yeah. <laughs> Do we keep our eyes on the match or QVC? Now, one of us, one one is the actual feed that's <laughs> that, that the viewers are watching. The other one is the one that we get to see. Okay. So, this 15, is 14. reality, but this is real, real time. I forgot to tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> this is a you match. Did. This is a match <laughs> from 2008. This <laughs> over here. <laughs> Oops. 15, I like that front angle, actually. Oh. Nice shot there from Paul Brady. It's dip and tuck, really. 14, 15. Score is 14 to 15 in game one. 14, 15. Paul hasn't really taken the lead. I don't think he has. I mean, he's tied the score, but he yeah. hasn't. Killian's fending him off. Sorry. Second serve. Oh, excellent return. Very aggressive with that. 
That ball is going to be crazy back there, yeah. and Killian can't get it back. And somehow Paul Brady's able to flip that ball up like that. I'm not sure how he was able to do it. Katrina, you work full time at an elementary school as a teacher in Bally Desmond, and, and you teach a class. You, ha you teach handball, of course, but you also do the ABCs like you're supposed to. <laughs> yeah. Talk about handball at this at this school in this class that you have. Um, well, this year gone by, I was actually working in Carisaibine in County Kerry, which is uh, the next county over to Cork. And uh, I wasn't in an area that traditionally plays handball. Like the nearest club was Glenby, which is maybe a 30 minute drive away. So I just wanted to introduce them to the sport because I felt pretty lucky, you know, growing up from Bally Desmond, there's a strong handball club there. Everyone that goes to school there kind of gets the opportunity to at least try it out. And if it's for them, they'll stick with it. If not, you know, there are plenty of other sports they can play. But um, yeah, we put up a fun-sized one-wall court in our assembly hall in the school. Um, got my own class playing regularly for our gym class. And then took all the other children to introduce them over a few sessions. Um, I also started taking the teachers and other staff after school. Um, we had a run there for a few weeks, uh, coming up to our official opening, and then we had a teachers versus students battle on the day. So the, the kind of, I just knew I'm going to a different school in September, so I wanted the teachers to have the skills and just be familiar with the game, and hopefully they'll keep it going. That's really, really awesome. This is one of the very few times that you actually couldn't, they wouldn't let you play in the teachers versus students. <laughs> exactly, yeah, I was the referee. <laughs> Who actually won that? The teachers won it, okay. yes. Right. Yeah, they took no mercy on their <laughs> much younger opponents, but it was good fun. And I got some of the top players from County Kerry down at Dominic Lynch, Jack O'Shea, John Joe Quirk, and we did an exhibition game as well. So I did get awesome. to play. That's great. Yeah, it was I mean, nice for them to see it played kind of at full speed. I've shown my own class some clips from the race. It seemed like Paul just broke that ball on the first throw in. It had a, it hit the corner and just kind of slowed down. 14, Killian picked it up and looked at it, but it's this was the way that these rounded corners are. We're back in at 14 to 15. Hits the crack tight at 15 now. Beautiful serve there from Paul Brady after that two-minute glove change. And that amazing talk about your <laughs> teaching and introducing of the game to those students. Katrina. Thank you. Yes. yes. No, I do not see a slide there. Slide. He's calling it for Killian, or? I thought just Killian put enough uh, natural on that. Just put it out of his reach. I'm not biased at all. Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, that ball's going to chop. Might go out into the stadium, and it does go out. Doesn't happen too often. Well, they have a tradition here that you have to uh, take your gloves off and run a lap around the whole facility when you do that. So I guess they're not going to follow the court rules, unfortunately. <laughs> Get out. Paul has not had a lead. And this could very well be the first time if he scores here. Replay. This place got really quiet there. Yeah, it's kind of tense. 50, 50. Pretty good defensive throw back to the back wall there, Katrina. Very creative. Right out. 
surprise there. Paul gave away that opportunity off the back wall. Doesn't overhit it, ceiling shots too often. 15, 15. Actually very good at that myself. <laughs> Does it frustrate you a little bit when you're in the tournament and you are not able to play on the show court leading up to your finals matches? Because no. I know it's happened before. Just yeah. to get adjusted to this back wall? It is nice to play maybe the semi-final match on the court that you're going to play on, but I just would, wouldn't allow myself to get too frustrated either way. Uh, like I have played on the sport many times. and Got in there a couple times this week just 50, 50. practicing. I know that your opponents have been upset about that in years past. That ball sounded like it snapped, and it did. I think you predicted that that ball would break about... Yeah. 12 minutes ago, and it finally did. So your well, prediction Well, Paul true. predicted it. Well, but you, I just you counter him. the prediction with another confirmation <laughs> with a big blue thumb. Based on trends in previous <laughs> matches. So it's an exception. You know, we're talking about your schooling as they warm up this ball, and you're teaching and instructing there in Ireland. You are one of three WPH master instructors. You're also the four-time women's race for eight player of the year. <laughs> 15, 15. So it's nice having you in the booth, but also nice. I don't know if you're, the students and teachers realize what they're getting when you're involved in that teaching, but they're getting it. Paul breaks over the top of the ball to keep it down. It's what would be like a reverse, but he's going straight over the top of that ball. Yeah. It's just perfect. He hits it about hip high. Crowd appreciated that one. That was a good rally. Now Paul's starting to crank this ball. Yeah, that was ball. powerful. Right shot. Quick change, two minutes, right out. That's all Killian has to say. Killian sign language is some of the, it's like universal. Everybody just knows what it means. He's conserving energy by not speaking. And I feel like just in the last couple rallies there, Paul's starting to step up the speed just a little bit. In, and then he takes it down a notch and it's still fast. I yeah. mean, he has such great leverage. Yeah. If you've watched his workouts, and I know you have, they're brutal. Before an actual match, he puts the bands on oh, and he does all the stretching. And yeah, glute how, activation and all that. How, do, you, do you involve yourself in stuff like that? I should. <laughs> um, I like to jump rope before playing and it just gets the heart rate up and you're getting warm and it gets your feet moving. Yeah, I find the hardest is actually getting your legs going. Like Sometimes they can be a bit heavy. It just appears to me that the pre-game workout session for Paul Brady would put most people into a situation the next day that they wouldn't be walking. Yeah, but maybe. Paul does that before a match like this. Yeah. And we're talking about a very brutal workout. And if you haven't seen it yet, we're definitely, I know time's running out with Paul, but we have to ca capture it on film. I've, I've done some paparazzi type, but I've never wanted to actually post it because I don't think it was fair. Yeah, I don't know if he'd allow it. But what he does is absolutely amazing. It, it, we're talking about a, a professional athlete, the way that you would expect yeah. professional athletes to train, but not, I don't know necessarily what football player wide receivers do or NBA basketball players do, but I don't have a, I have a feeling it's not what Paul Brady does, which is just nasty brutal. I guess he's into pain is what I'm saying because that's, <laughs> those band exercises are un unreal and how he's able to tap into, let's use more legs now, after he's been ran around and vice versa with Killian. Still amazing. 15, 15. Talk about footwork, look at Killian Carroll. Yeah, now at this point, I'm gonna point out that I did beat him on the dance machine at the, <laughs> the arcade <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> so like his, Footwork skills are very specialized to handball <laughs> and nothing else. Not very good at the Macarena on the dance machine, I hear. Hold it. 
As you know, that has tricky dance moves. Tricky footwork. Oh yeah, very tricky. Paul's hitting that ball about a half inch off the ground when he makes contact. Second serve. And the ball's rising by about a half an inch. That ball just eats up Killian. 16-15. And there it is. The first lead that we can recall. 16-15 to 15 for Paul Brady. Oh, nice get from Killian. Punches oh, yeah. it with a backhanded fist. And now the rally keeps going. Paul dove to start it off, but then misses on that left corner kill. And Killian gets back into the server's box. Yeah, he earned that one. There's the replay here as Killian punches that with a backhanded right fist. But it was led off by a dive from Paul Brady, who normally doesn't hit the deck. As that rally ends with a little dip into that left corner. You can kind of sense it now. Paul Brady takes the lead for the very first time. It's 16 to 15. And it's like both of them decided to flip the switch there in that rally. Both players now channeling their inner Dave Chapman. <laughs> Getting their breath back. And this somehow seems to be acceptable. You see Paul Brady dive on that replay, which you very rarely see Paul leave his feet. Killian keeps it going. Here's the miss. I'm not sure if our camera's going to capture it all the way through. It does, and it just dips in. That's yeah. that modified underhand left-handed But that all happened paddle. at very high speed, of course, so <laughs> that would explain the error at the end. Yeah, great catch. And Killian's so quick 15, to bounce 16. back up once he hits the deck. Ball. ball just grazes Killian. You don't see these pro players 15, get upset when they get hit by a ball from their opponent. Oh, no. But in the other brackets, <laughs> I'll tell you, if they hit you, they want to take you outside. Really? <laughs> Well, you're not there, so you you don't know what it's like. Point. Now Killing is tied at 16. Well, I experienced it yesterday. Hit my opponent a couple times, but 16, you know, 15. on purpose. Sorry. The, the second time was, but the first time. 16, 16. They get so offended. Paul was fooled there. Killian just able to break the momentum and then misses on that slider down that left wall. He's having some troubles over there on the left side. Yeah, I do think this back wall is tricky. I don't know what it is about it, but even his previous back wall shot there on the right, it's hard to tell from this angle, but he didn't look comfortable on it. Nice. Flattens that ball out. Killian's looking for a screen. Mm. Referee doesn't give that it to him. That was a beautiful shot from Paul. Yeah. That's what I'm saying about that reverse with his left hand. He's able to reverse it and keep it flat down the wall. I thought Paul was appealing a slide. Out. That happens a lot, one agrees, one disagrees. I'd nearly be inclined to go with the call of the lines judge on that side, though. That's Abraham Montijo on that right side. Right Another fellow school teacher like yourself. Correct. Introducing handball to the masses. 17 <laughs> 16. Paul Brady with the lead again, 17 to 16. Sorry. Paul Brady's won 10 national championships in singles, looking to tie Nadi Alvarado Sr. Killian Carroll defeated Paul Brady last year, keeping him from number 11. Paul just again goes over the top, hits that perfectly down the right. Start. 
Second serve. They've turned off the fan there. I don't know if that's a good thing. Really? Well, it's great it's for us, <laughs> but it might could become get wish. Yeah, yeah, it could get slick in there. But I like. Ooh. Point. There's a point for killing with a, a floored fish shot off the knuckles from Paul Brady. 17 18. 17 to 18 here. Paul is not going to allow that to happen, and he swings oh, and misses. Wow. That's a point for Killian Carroll. Paul says something to the ref, but I didn't understand what he was yeah, trying to I'm say. Yeah, I'm not sure either. I, it, I think he was just so conscious of not actually crossing the line there that that's why he missed it. Which I is a good sign of a lob, obviously, just barely. That's three unforced errors here in a row from Paul Brady calls a timeout. Yeah, it's a good timeout. Last timeout. Strange. I believe we're tied at 18 here, but Paul doing a lot of talking with the ref, but it wasn't, I don't think, over anything the ref did, but I also don't know what it is because it didn't seem like Paul was angry. Paul Brady, nonetheless, making three strange errors there, there at this last few sessions, and now we're tied at 18. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting finale to game one. All three of the errors coming on balls that were hit very slow. Yeah. Like, that's the key with Paul Brady. Hit it as slow as you can, maybe. Yeah, that's why everybody beats him. Don't hit it 90 miles an hour. <laughs> Don't dive everywhere. Just lob it. Paul Brady last year was looking for number 11, and Killian stopped him with 11 to 10 tiebreaker win. Killian wins his first, comes into this tournament. Paul Brady is just smoking people in his side of the bracket. Killian pretty much doing the same on his side. But yeah. the, the talk is still was how... Let's just go ahead and call the paper and give Paul Brady the trophy now. Ooh, really? But it, well, you know, you're from the same county as Killian, so those people don't talk to you when they, <laughs> they talk about this talk. They know better. But it's been that sort of feeling, and Killian has been either leading the whole game or within one. 19 18. So it is 19 to 18. I think so. Oh, wow, nice shot right there yeah, from Killian. I think Paul thought that he was going to try to squeak it down the right wall. Killian hits the corner, jams out across to the left. Now 20, I believe. Game point played 18. And that's what it is, 20 to 18. And he goes with an overhand Chapman lob serve. And I've never seen Killian do that serve before, by the way. Ah, uh, you have. Not an overhand <laughs> lob, not like that. Ooh. Oh, nice, nice get. Get up. And he's going to get oh. it again. And he oh, might wow. have got Paul Brady out of position here. Great rally. This is an unbelievable rally here. Hopefully it ends on a great shot. Oh, wow. That's unbelievable how Paul Brady was able to do that. Irish whip down the middle. The best rally we've seen of the tournament so far. Paul Brady, there he goes over the top and hits an exclusive elite. Pounding fist shot or possibly an open hand, but either way, he went over the top of the ball, keeps it down. That was a great rally right there. That has to benefit Killian in a way, even though Paul gets the momentum back. Because Killian rally. is just wearing Paul's legs down yeah. here. And Killian didn't do much wrong there. Watch, Paul's going to bob his head up and down here, trying to get himself motivated. Inside out, down the right. Great serve from Paul. Now Paul's got his 19th point. I'll tell you, the crowd appreciated that rally. 19 points. Only two, two points, two rallies to win it. Nice. nice. Last 
point can always be uh, hardest to get. Second timeout. Timeout called from Killian Carroll. We just saw one of the best rallies that you'll ever witness. Killian do going to the floor at least three times in that yeah. rally, kept it alive. Both players playing their style of defense, which is reacting and flipping balls around, and you're waiting for somebody to have the opening. I don't believe Paul really had the opening to take that shot, yeah. but he took it anyway. Yeah. And I think a lot of, getting. you think it was related to getting a little tired and I, I need to go for this, or is that just like have oh. him in the back court and I'm yeah, just. Yeah, I think he saw Killian was slightly behind him there. Just went for it. Which takes a lot of guts when you're defending game point. Paul Brady is 59-3 and three in WPH Race for Eight history. 14 titles, which is the most ever. Only losses are to Mondo Ortiz and Killian Carroll. Brady has only lost four games in his last 12 national starts. And those games were Tony Healy in 2008, Luis Moreno 2016, Carroll in 2016 lost twice. He's a five-time defending world champion, which is a record. And then, as you stated, 10 Irish championships. But, you know, I feel that those 10, he could have made it 16 if he would have played all of them, made it 18 Maybe. even. He would have been there, thereabouts anyway. Certainly would have got a couple more. This is game point. And he gets it, but the ball did slide. Yeah, it did. It, it did. definitely Killian did too. because the ball shot down underneath Paul's hand. Killian saw it, gave it to him. Replay. Game point, play 19. Wow. Oh, wow. Nice. Get up. Unbelievable, Killian. Paul just Down takes right. that ball. Oh, nice move. Change of direction. Oh. Wow. There it is. Killian Carroll takes game number one. And the crowd puts their hands together for Killian as he goes all over the court here. Unbelievable finish right there. Yeah, great rally. He deserved that game one, I think. Paul Brady walking really slowly off the court here. I mean, he looked tired as he was walking around to congratulate Killian. Yeah, that was just that was an hour-long game, like. 21-19 was a the score there, and Killian Carroll looked like he was on the ropes twice, at least twice in that rally. Paul had him in terrible positions and just left the door open slightly for Killian, who liked the the flash that he is found a way to get that spark going and he closed it out with that kill on the left side. That, that was a thrilling that first was. game. That, it, it, I'm worn out from watching that. I actually do <laughs> that feel, last rally. <laughs> I feel emotional. You know, we're talking about some of the top players playing each other and then they, they go off and they might shed a tear or cry if they win or lose. I actually feel that sort of angst that was an unbelievable rally and first game there for both players, but Killian Carroll just pulling it out at the very end. He just makes it so hard for you because you have, you know, you're saying against Paul Brady that you have to make the perfect shot, the perfect kill shot. Yeah, but, also against but Paul, Killian. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Paul is passing Killian and yeah. he's catching up to those balls. He, he doesn't mind diving into the sidewall to get it back, but he's just right back into the play again. And he didn't even give him, like, he didn't give Paul a perfect setup either. He wasn't just scrambling them back. That was just an unbelievable, unbelievable ending to just such a great first game. It's the 67th USHA Four Wall National Handball Championships. Brought to you by the World Players of Handball, WPHLive.tv. Here's the referee getting some air after that. The referee has to get out of there. That was just an incredible first game. I, I don't recall a first game setting the tempo like that, but Killian Carroll winning the first one 21 to 19. Paul Brady had the lead at 19 to 18, and Killian started pecking away again, and it just was 
those last two rallies actually were the two best I think I've ever seen with Killian hitting the, the floor unreported seven times in those two rallies alone. Yeah, I think that last rally and the rally that Paul finished with that underhand rollout, those two were probably just, up there with the best. It was just remarkable. It just really was remarkable. I don't know what we're going to expect here from game number two, but you could say that, that Katrina, that most of the people that are watching this will have to be like saying that, well, Paul had to win that first one. Yeah, I mean, that's how I you can, would look at it, right? Yeah, I can. But this is Paul that. Brady. That we're talking about yep. here. Killian's going to have to get tired someday, right? Interesting statistic there from Dave Steinberg that Paul Brady hit 14 shots in game one. Sounds about right. Yeah, like you said, maybe struggling to hone in on that serve that's earned him so many easy points in the run up to the final. Back to you, Katrina. You're coming up with your women's, I believe, semifinals match right after this. Correct. And you have played in a lot of these stops. Now that you're a professional having to, you know, you know, make a living in, in this real world, how do you how do you discern between I still want to be the greatest and all the goals that you have for handball, but I still want to, you know, be able to have the freedom to still go to these events and also live and have a life? How, how do you balance this stuff out? Yeah, well, it's hard, but I guess everyone has to do it. Um, like, I enjoy teaching, and but handball is my passion, and I'm not really going to let that um, take too much of a backseat. So it just comes down to time management, really, and prioritizing what's important. Um, but look, I love it. I can't really complain. It must be difficult because not only are you winning the championships over here, but you're mentoring students, you're working full time, you've just graduated from college, but you're in a different country. So you have to fly across the pond to come to some of these high profile tournaments. And you almost say, I wish I could just take these four month sabbaticals to the States and just start doing sweeping the tour season and then yeah, go amazing. back home and still, can can we clone you and have, <laughs> have the you that goes to school and and teaches, stay in Ireland and, and, and mentor and do all those things and then have the, the other you just live in the United States. Is well, that a possibility? Well, I was really lucky the past year. It was my first year. I have three years out of college and I spent two years working as a substitute teacher. So it was my first year um, having my own class and that brought a lot of extra responsibilities. But I was lucky really that the school allowed me to travel to all the tournaments. I just had to manage um, you know, not spend as many days out here before the tournament as I would have liked. Just kind of come, play, go home again. But uh, yeah, it would be great if it was convenient to come out for a few months at a time. But we also kind of have our own championships running back home. Um, like we might have had the quarterfinal one weekend. I probably came over and played uh, in New York the next weekend, back again for the next round of championships. So just have to spread yourself a little bit thin every now and again. But Paul Brady actually is a primary school teacher as well, the same profession as myself. And he is managing it also. So we'd all love to be full-time professional athletes, of course. Yeah, of course. So if well. anybody out there would like to make that happen, <laughs> Please contact us. Anybody that has a rich uncle, yeah. here's my phone number. Or aunt. Or aunt. <laughs> well, we admire you. And I know that just walking around the club, there's a lot of people that came up that haven't seen you play in person, but a lot have. But they said, I have to see this Katrina Casey. And then I would give them my, my thing that I do, which is the rundown of your life. <laughs> and then they would say, I have to see her play. I, I, you know, and I said, well, there's only about 10 people in the whole facility that can actually beat her. And, you know, there's, know there that. is some talk about why you didn't play in the men's oh, open. Oh, stop. <laughs> no, I mean, really. <laughs> there is. I, I, I believe, first of all, I believe that you would have got gotten probably a 9 or 10 seed out of the, out of the you know, which oh, would have put you. That. No, you would have. You're being very humble here, but it's a serious question. Did you think about playing the second division and. And why not? It's the same ball. 
you wouldn't yeah, have to worry about that. Yeah, it's great that it is the same ball, and I actually really like the red 21, but no, no. <laughs> well, I think you should. We've been discussing this uh, forever. Lately, I'm trying to get um, you to. I'm trying to get you to go on the men's pro tour, and it, I, I'm not quite certain why you keep turning it down. Oh, I have a lot of hard work <laughs> to do. Before you have a lot that. of kids to instruct back in <laughs> Ireland. Well, I hope it happens. I'm trying to plant the seed right now. Why not just do it? We know you can do it, Katrina. <laughs> well, Joe McCann <laughs> and Ricky O'Gara, I don't think I can do it because we've been discussing this lately. You know, it's been in the news about John McEnroe's comments about Serena Williams, that she would be ranked like 700th right, in the world if she competed fine. against the men. So I've had a lot of uh, defending to do of female athletes <laughs> around yeah, but these yeah, Irish yeah. players. But you're not Shame defending yourself them. very well here. You're, you're downplaying you. <laughs> Okay, we're getting ready for game number two. Killian wins game one, 21 to 19, and there is the first serve against Paul Brady. Point. You find it hard after you win that first one against somebody that is one of your biggest foes to continue with that energy and that emotion into game number two? Uh, well, it is hard to sustain it because they are obviously going to be hugely motivated to win game two as well. And like they're bound to hit form at some point. Point. Wow, two corner rollouts to start game two. This looks a lot like the beginning of game one. Two zero. There's Joe and Ricky that I was just talking about and how they're completely sexist to female <laughs> athletes. <laughs> That's the luxury of having an outside booth here. <laughs> Killian looks at that front wall camera hole thinking the ball jammed out of it at an angle, and it very well could have. Zero two. Score is zero to two. Oh, they're back to defend Four. themselves. Yeah, I love Second Joe and Ricky, really. They're great. Good luck in your doubles, guys. Well, the, You're the distracting us, though. Go. Yeah, the best-looking doubles team. Oh, best-looking, according to Dave Vincent. Well, I'm just telling you what I've heard. <laughs> I'm just a reporter. I'm not here making judgments. I'm just reporting what I hear from people. If you don't want me to report, I won't. <laughs> no, no, you're entitled okay, to Okay, it's all yours. <laughs> Back to the game. Should be a put away for Paul here, and it is. Right corner kill. Two, two. Surprised by that appeal there, just over the line, I think. Four two. Just skipped. Right out. I don't know if you've ever Two noticed, five. but it seems like the right side of this court is a little oh. higher than the left side, just by maybe an inch from right corner to left corner. Not just because our monitor is tilted, but if you next time you're in the gallery, take a look, and you will see that there's a little. Height difference. So right you out. think there are more skips on one side than the other? Is I that think that on, an, on another court, that ball would have not have been skipped. That's what I'm saying. Five two. The score is five to two. 
Nice shot from Paul nice Brady. Killing Killian Carroll got here by defeating our referee. Let the replay that point. Wow. Saying that the ball slid mm -hmm. prior. Did you yeah, see that? I didn't notice it. Two five. Don't lie. Yep. I don't think Paul was happy about that. Right out. Must have slid. That's what they five say. Two. Paul, don't lie. Two errors again here from yeah. Paul. And a point for Killian now six to two. Lucky escape. And make that three in a row now, unless that ball is going to be considered a slide. Timeout. And a timeout from Paul Brady. No, it's going to be called a point. It'll be seven to two. Killian Carroll got here by defeating our referee. Shorty Ruiz, 21-9, 21-3 in the opening quarter round that he played in. Then got past Emmett Pichot, 21-10, 21-9. First game victory against Paul Brady, 21-19 here. Paul, he got here by defeating Jesse Aranda, 5-1 in the round of 16. Abraham Montijo, 21-6, 21-5. And then Vic Perez, 21-6, 21-8. Yeah, so all under double digits for Paul. Which is kind of a kind standard. of a standard thing for mm -hmm. Paul at these nationals. But even the you know having to play that opening round that does put an extra you know hour onto Paul's tournament. Yeah. Killian doesn't get that because he gets the number one seed. I don't know if it seat. even lasted an hour to be honest. That's true. I don't think that would face him. I don't think that would um, take much out of him. Seven two. And you know, Vic Perez was playing great this tournament. So just the fact that Paul, you know, on the scoreboard at least, won so easily um, shows how well he was playing yesterday. And it seems that Killian has all the answers right now. See, every single shot that he's hitting. That was a little bit fortunate, yeah. It seems like he's going right. You know, you're talking about being a, a shot maker earlier about Killian. That's what we've seen here in game number two. He's making yeah. shots happen when. I don't think in any other scenario would he be going for those exact shots. Right now he has a huge lead because of shot making. Yeah. Kind of similar to the start of game one with that 9-4 lead. See, I mean, yeah. he's just making these. Now, he's Paul gave that one to him. But, right. And obviously winning game one has given him a, that bit more freedom. Short. Paul slid after the short. Killian saw it. Paul going to clean it up. But I, I don't know how many Second serve. sports. I mean, we say this a lot about handball. There's another point now for Killian Carroll. Paul Brady walking back slowly here. How many sports do you defeat your you defeat your first round opponent well, and then he's referee in your finals? Yeah. That was short, I think. I think in handball you've had probably brothers refereeing brothers and. Well, at least playing against each other, you've had yep. employers versus employees. Tight knit community. Well, I always fire. <laughs> if they beat yeah. you. If I'm, in if I'm in charge of any of those employees, they're fired if it doesn't turn out in my favor. So I'm not saying that. Good policy. Start. Seems fair. That's why we only have two employees now. Second serve. Light out. Killian's got all the answers right now. Yeah. 32. It's almost as if Paul Brady's completely deflated after that game number one. And Paul needed to win that first game. Yeah, and like he won't give up. He's never going to give up until the game is over. Well, he's going to go with an overhand lob serve here, which is something you wouldn't see Paul normally do. Now, of course. Now that I say that, he's probably going to change it to a power serve, but he was loading up as if he was going to Tony Healy this ball. This wouldn't be a position that Paul is used to being in. 
down 13 to 2. Let's hope he doesn't hit it into the side wall here. Let out. I mean, Killian just. I don't think that serve could have gone any worse. Well, Paul's just now searching, I think. That's a good shot. Two to 13 is the score. Killian, you saw him hesitate just a bit there, kind of fooled on that left side wall. It, the, the left wall, the left back wall, it has really kind of fooled Killian in this in this uh, match so far. Yet he still has to, oh. <laughs> the first game win and the second game Sorry. lead. That's, but you can see that he stutter steps. He's not taking kill shots off the back wall over there. It, it's kind of a black hole. I mean, and you're right. They have a sunroof here. And, and that when you cover that roof up, it just kind of changes the lighting in the back and it just yeah, looks it hollow. Kind of dark. Second serve. Oh, Paul didn't think he was able to get that. And you hear the crowd kind of cheer. That must have been a great get over on the right side. Paul's yeah. unable to track it down. Love to see a replay of yeah. that shot that Killian hit on the right side. Because you saw Paul kind of walking back. 13-2. Killian flipped it up. Does it feel special to you to know that you and Killian are both number one ranked and you're both from like really the same community, the same little tiny small well, county? Yeah, well, Killian, yeah, same county. Killian would be from Mallow Handball Club Point. and there's probably loads watching from Mallow. Um, probably Killian's so brother, hello, Pike. So hello, hello to Mallow. To all of them. <laughs> yes, hello to Mallow. Um, but yeah, like we basically, I've known Killian since we were eight or nine years old, competing in the county championships. Um, so it is very special, definitely. And you know, he's had the ambition to be number one from a very young age. And he's worked hard and he's earned it. Unbelievable, wow. Killian. Gets fooled by Paul. Paul goes inside out down the right. Killing just makes the adjustment. Underhand wrist flip to the front wall. Ball takes, you know, a little bit off of it with that spin that he puts on it. Paul's unable to get up front to get it. And Killing's just been doing this creative point scoring, rally ending throughout this whole match. Right Paul's playing more of a traditional style of Paul Brady game, that, that ground and pound. And Killian seemed to really adjust uh, slightly more than Paul has, and that's the first point for Paul in quite some time. We're talking about three to fifteen here in game number two. Right out. Killing is doing to Paul what yeah. Paul does to most opponents. He's acting like making him look bad, like the assassin right now. It's almost like Killing's trying to send a message point. to Paul. Wow. Oh. Yeah. I mean, Paul has been a guy that's, like you said, done this to everybody else throughout his career. Unbelievable get. And you would have to think that if Paul Brady were to go on and lose this, how, first of all, A, dramatic it's going to be for Paul because he doesn't take the loss as well. And these are like three to four, five, six month type get over the situation. But all of the training that he put in for this, which I hear has been just brutal. And you have to say, I came up short and I did all of this work. You know, and you have to think of all the, the things that are going to go through his head now. If, if he were to go on to lose this and just knowing Paul's personality, it, it takes a half year for him to say whether or not he wants to do it again next year because he would have to say, I put in as much work as I ever have. He looked better than anybody in this whole tournament mm -hmm. serve. with maybe an exception to Killian Carroll. Well, I'm sure he won't regret any of the preparation he's done. Like, he, he's obviously such a perfectionist. And just a lot of the time, it's going to come down to your performance on the day. 
but of course I don't blame Paul for taking time to decide what he, he'll do next um, you know he's dedicated so much of his life to handball and obviously there are other things he wants to pursue I know he's getting married um, in September and he completed a master's in sports psychology recently Meanwhile, Killian just keeps scoring points here. I thought Paul broke Killian's four. momentum there. And you can kind of see Paul kind of relaxing. And Killian comes right back with a couple kill shots. There's a hand air from Paul. Now Killian's just a couple points away from taking four. another national title, 18 to four. Let out. Paul gets a side out. Killian's upset with himself there, by the way. Want that to be noted, shaking four his head. 18. And for Killian, that's a complete blow up. <laughs> <laughs> Complete meltdown. Yeah, he's lost it. Replay. <laughs> the ball slid, so they're going to replay it. 418. Or perhaps it was a bad bounce. Point. Paul walking back, thinking that Killian was going to kill that. 518. Wow. Point. What kind of reverse wrinkle did Paul put on that ball? It jams into the right wall and pops up. Five to 18. Six 18. Six 18 now. Right out. Killian proves that he can roll it out from 38 feet. Interesting underhand lob serve there from Paul, but yes. it was sort of 86. like it seemed like a great idea. Right out. You see Killian still not comfortable with that Six back 18. left. He leaves it up for Paul. Right out. I'm out, Killian. I think that's a good timeout because Kind of entered a funny stage in the game there. It's been a while since Killian made points, actually. It has. Paul's rattled off about three straight. He's up to six. It's dropped in intensity a little bit. Well, it's the crowd's also dropped in intensity. Yeah, I know in the booth we're full of energy. Yeah, when one player has such a big lead. <laughs> here, in the, here in the booth, it's just like just full of energy. I don't know but, about that. Yeah. But in the crowd, it's also quiet because I believe some of these fans are a little stunned in a way because of what Paul did earlier in the tournament when he was walking through players and kind of playing around with the crowd a little bit and himself taking shots that he normally wouldn't take. It seemed kind of fun but also dominant at the same time, which made it fun for Paul. But then Killing comes in and just took a needle and stuck it right into the balloon when he came back to win in game number one. I say comeback. It was down, you know, 18 to 19. Yes. It was literally Killian leading all of game number one, and Paul tying it at 16, and then Killian going up 17 to 16, Paul going up 18 to 17, 19, 17, Paul, uh, Killian yeah. coming back and tying it and then going ahead with a string of unorthodox hand airs from Paul Brady at, at one point, and then, then some amazing play from both of them. Some of the two longest rallies we've seen in the tournament, and certainly in Paul Brady's spot, career. Even, yeah. At least two out of three rallies were the best we've ever seen, I think. And like you don't say that very often. Well, <laughs> Just yeah, me saying the match. word best ever. <laughs> that that hardly has That's ever that hardly has ever happened. <laughs> but genuinely amazing. Well someone said, you know, you, you said that was the best ever. I go, well it's the best ever after the last best ever. Yeah, They're all getting fair better. Enough. They're all getting better. Paul back with another side out. Six nineteen. Six to 19 with Killian two points away. And he's gonna go serve here now. Two points to take a title, number two, and to defeat Paul Brady. Let's see if Killian could do it here. That's gonna be hit a little too hard. Paul doesn't seem to have any problems with that ball off the left wall. Now he's back in the service box. Sometimes when you get to this point, Katrina, when you're climbing the mountain, and then all of a sudden you just get to this lull yeah. where you can't score a point and you're and you know it's happening while it's happening, you know what exactly is happening, but you just still can't solve it. Yeah. It's, it's frustrating. 
I think Killian did the right thing by calling that timeout, maybe to try to break it. Six nineteen. Crowd likes that. It's a great off the back wall rollout flat from Killian Carroll. I want to thank Katrina Casey for stepping into the broadcast booth. Katrina, I know that you need to get ready for your semifinal match coming up next. And at any time, if you feel like you want to do it, you can just hand me the headset. I'm thank completely you. okay. So I want to, I want to thank you for being in the booth here now. And I know you want to watch this last shot as well. So I, either way, I know that you would be watching Hopefully this. Hopefully Killian will make a big speech after and uh, that <laughs> delay the start of my match a little bit. And this could be it. Killian goes oh, for it. He wow. gets it. The national title is now Killian Carroll's. It was inevitable. That it, would, it would happen like this after he got that big lead. Paul was unable to bring it back. And a great win for Killian Carroll taking down Paul Brady in consecutive years. Yeah, and I think this one might even mean more to him than last year. The fact that he could back it up. Our executive director is Vern Roberts on the left. The development director has a microphone, Matt Kruger. Yes, uh, we'll listen First in. of all, let's give these guys another round of applause. <laughs> um, you know, coming in today, how, how did, mentally did you prepare coming onto the court? Um, well, as I said, playing like the best player in the world and probably the greatest player that ever has ever lived. You know, you really got to mentally prepare and months before it, you know, thinking about it constantly and, you know, what am I going to do during the game and not even thinking about any other player, just Paul himself. So mentally just trying to strategize on his strengths and keep up his uh, very powerful game and just going into um, with a lot of confidence, I suppose, more than I've ever had before. So after last year's final you guys meet in New York and you know he, he had you there at the New York Athletic Club is that at all playing any part of, of what was going through your head just stepping on the court again with him again oh yeah I mean it's a big difference between like all the other pro players and Paul because he's a lot more consistent you know he's he's a very more athletic than any other player so when you're coming on the court there's no easy shot and even when you're up five or six aces, he comes at you like with, um, you know, he can get six or seven serves in a row, and next thing he's back in the game, he's dominating the court. So I mean, he's probably the most difficult opponent I will ever play against. I don't know, but I would say so. So mentally, it's 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 a very difficult thing when he beats you during the year. That's uh, very nice compliments, and again, congrats to Paul for a tremendous tournament. Thank you. That's Matthew Kruger. Congrats, Killian, on your second title. Congratulating Killian nice. Carroll nice there. I'm not sure if we're going to get a word from Paul Brady. Normally we do, but we'll still have that presentation here with that trophy. They're doing the on-court presentation here. Paul Brady has a smile on his face, but you know deep down that's not something that's... Well, he doesn't train for this situation, that's for sure. Boy, he was really just a wrecking ball in his bracket all the way through here, and then he gets to Killing, and Killing does what he does. Matthew Kruger handing Paul Brady that second place trophy, a check. Paul looks to see how much immediately is on there, and then Killing Carroll gets his trophy and a check. Paul still. Checking so, that check. Is he counting the zeros? Is that what he's doing? <laughs> Just. I, I think I think Katrina. She summed it up perfectly in that first game that every single time Killian got one of Paul's shots, you could just see a little bit exit out of him. It was just frustration, and then to to, to lose that game ultimately just took a, a huge toll from him. And he wasn't the same player in the second game as he was the first game. No, he wasn't. Photo op time here for the two players. It's Killian Carroll winning in two. 21 to 19, 21 to eight, taking down Paul Brady. And that bid to tie Nadia Alvarado Sr. for the second straight year. And now Killian Carroll has just added to the stats, defeating Paul Brady three times now. Congratulations once again. Great match there. United States Handball Association, 67th 
USHA Four Wall National Handball Championships.